But what UConn and Dan Hurley did in this national championship game, it was nothing short of straight up exposing Purdue for who they really are. A little warning and disclaimer here. What I'm about to say next is going to be extremely harsh, but it's a cold hard truth. And I feel bad for Edie because he couldn't have done anything more. The dude dropped a 40 burger. A 40 burger in the national championship and still lost by 15 points. So UConn and Purdue just got done wrapping up about eh, 45, 50 minutes ago, give or take. And as soon as the game ended, I was like, all right, let's make a video on it. But I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Matter of fact, let me do this because I want to be sure about what I'm talking about here. I went back and I rewatched the entire game. Of course, I sped it up a little bit to crunch the 45 minute time frame, but I rewatched it. And the reason I did that is because I was looking for a couple different things and I just wanted to cross all my T's and dot all my I's for when I was going to speak on the game, which I'm currently doing right now. And originally, before I watched it for the second time, I had a couple plays singled out where I was going to show you guys and break it down play by play like we do with the college football games. But after watching it the second time, I just scratched that idea. I was like, no, there's no need of doing that. There's no need of overcomplicating it because it's relatively simple. The reason UConn beat Purdue is fairly simple. Some people, all these analysts, they're going to try to overcomplicate it. But to me, in my humble opinion, it's simple. And we're going to dumb it down. And matter of fact, I go as far as to saying this. They didn't just beat Purdue. They straight up exposed Purdue. And it's ugly when you watch it for the second or third time if some of you choose to do so. And the reason I use the word ugly is because a lot of times when you're watching a national championship in any sports... It's an even matchup, right? I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. You don't just fluke your way to a national championship, whether that be in basketball, football, etc. Well, outside of TCU making it a couple years ago in the playoff, but different conversation for a different day. That was an exception. For the most part, in the vast majority, when you're watching a national championship or a Final Four or a playoff in college football, all those teams, they match up evenly, and it's a close game. But what UConn and Dan Hurley did in this national championship game, it was nothing short of straight up exposing Purdue for who they really are. What do I mean by that? Well, a little warning and disclaimer here. What I'm about to say next is going to be extremely harsh, but it's a cold hard truth. Whether you like it or not, and I got a feeling most of you aren't going to like this, I got to call things for how I see them. I have stated this all year long. If you take Zach Eady, a.k.a. Fal Ming, off of Purdue, they're an average basketball team, and I'm not sold on the fact that they would have even made the tournament without foul Ming. With that being said, let me also throw this in there. I have a ton of respect and admiration for Zach Eady, and despite what some people may say about him, oh, he's just tall, my brother. He is not just tall. He is a skilled big man. I'm not going to sit up here and act like him being 7'4 doesn't give him an advantage. It does. But I have played with 7-footers myself, and a bunch of them aren't coordinated. They can't catch the ball. And even if they catch the ball, they can't do the moves that Zach Eady does. I get it. It's kind of popular to hate on Zach Eady, and I just called him Foul Ming a couple seconds ago. But that's all jokes and whatnot. The dude's actually somewhat skilled. And if you didn't believe in how good he was heading into this matchup, well, you saw it tonight against a guy who's the same height as him almost and Don McClingan. He's seven foot two and Zach Eady, he was still pulling off the same moves on him. Edie's a dominant player. You've got to give credit where it's due. And the reason I start out with him first is because it leads me into my next point perfectly. I have said this since I'd probably say the halfway point of the season. Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer are below average guards. It's not even the fact that I don't think they're great. No. I don't even think they're good. I don't even think they're average. They're below average. Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith. They seem like good guys, and I'm sure they are. But there's no way they should be playing and starting on a team in the Final Four. Them guys are slow, unathletic, no moves, zero bag, can't create a shot for himself. They can't do anything besides catch and shoot when Zach Eady gets quadruple team. That's it. That's all they do. And oh yeah, I got those in there. They are decent at passing the ball to Zach Eady. But am I really about to sit up here and hype up Fletcher Lawyer's post-passing ability that's something you learn at the age of seven years old most of y'all know this i had a career ending injury in high school in playing this sport of basketball which i love and i'm starting to believe after i watch purdue all throughout this tournament that with my career ending injury i could have went out there and been just as efficient as Braden smith and fletcher lawyer them guys can't play at a high level they're simply not very good and i have to throw this in there that's not a personal jab at them like i said i'm sure they're great guys but we're talking about basketball here. It's not personal. It's as simple as this. You can't have guys who are going to be working at Liberty Mutual in a couple of years starting as your guards in the national championship. I'm not saying you got to have a, uh, I don't know, a Kyrie Irving or a Rob Dillingham out there, but you got to have some bucket getters. You got to have some dogs and future NBA players, or at least future G League players. And UConn has that. The three guards for UConn, Castle, Newton, and Spencer, 
They ate lawyer and Braden Smith's lunch. Castle, 6 for 13, had 15 points. Newton, 6 for 13, had 20 points. And Spencer, 5 for 12, and had 11 points. But they all shot around 50% from the field. It was right below at around 45. And what you see in this box score for UConn right here, it was the remedy other season all year long. They didn't have one star player like a Zach Eady. They didn't have a guy who was getting a 30-burger every single night. It was a bunch of guys that were really good getting 15, 20 points per game. And in this game, you saw it firsthand. UConn was a great and outstanding team. The difference is Purdue just had one great and outstanding player in Zach Eady. That's it. Purdue, not a great team. UConn, great team. And that's why they won. And I'm happy UConn won, not because I'm a UConn fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I like it when the team that should win and deserves to win, they do pull it off. The only separating factor in this game was guard play. If you put Cam Spencer, Castle, and Newton on Purdue, then I think they win this game. This is a proven fact. As crazy and as bizarre as March Madness is, the unexpected always happens, there's one thing that holds true. If you don't have good, and I'm not even saying great or elite, but if you don't have good guard play, you're not going to make it very far. And you saw it last year. What was the kryptonite for Purdue? Their guard play, and that's why they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson. And this year, what was their kryptonite? It came true in the final game of the season. Guard play. The only thing that hid how pitiful the guard play was all year long was the fact that Zach Eady was dropping 30 points per game. And I watched quite a bit of Purdue's games this year, and yeah, Braden Smith, I think he wound up averaging 15, 20 points per game this year, but you gotta understand, every single shot he took was due to Zach Eady giving him wide open looks. Oh, wait a minute, my fault. Oh, I don't even know what I was talking about. Braden Smith, I just pulled it up, he only averaged 12 points per game, so I get more credit than he actually deserved there. I could go on and on, I think you get the point. The guard play was pitiful Purdue in this game, and UConn, their guard play, it was solid. Continuing along here, just like this comment says right here, I'll just let them take it from here. UConn was better coach, more athletic, and more aggressive, a superior team. And I couldn't agree anymore. Took the words out of my mouth. We all know this. Matt Painter, head coach of Purdue. I don't think he's a bad head coach, but he's nothing too special. Dan Hurley, though, that guy, he has UConn running plays like a well-oiled machine. And that is rare for college kids. When you watch UConn play all throughout March Madness, you're just like, well, dang, man. I don't know if anybody can beat them. And my biggest takeaway from this game after watching it for the second time is this right here. UConn was the better overall team in every aspect of the basketball game outside of Zach Eady. And I feel bad for Eady because he couldn't have done anything more. The dude dropped a 40-burger. A 40-burger in the national championship and still lost by 15 points. If I was Zach Eady and this is just the type of teammate I was, I'd be going up to Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith like, dude, can y'all do anything? Can you help me out? Just a little bit. I'm not saying you gotta carry us, but can you hit a couple of shots, man? Look, man, sometimes in this life, you're gonna run up against opponents and people that are just simply better than you. Doesn't matter what you do, they're better. And that was the case here. Sure, Purdue had the best player in the nation, but you gonna have the best team in the nation. I don't think anybody is gonna argue that. I think we're in the same boat on that. And I think a good comparison with this is now that I think about it, is Iowa with Caitlin Clark and then playing up against South Carolina. You saw, if you watched that Women's National Championship game, and I'm sure most of you did, I think it had like 20 million some viewers, South Carolina was the best team in that game, but Iowa had the best player, and South Carolina won. Similar thing happened here. Purdue, you're not that guy. The only reason you even got this far is because of Zach Eady, so you better be thanking him. And not to say that I didn't enjoy the game, because I did to a certain degree here, but I would have much rather seen Houston with Jamal Shedd go up against UConn. I think that would have been a better matchup. Purdue simply got exposed. That's all there was to it. There was a one-man show the entire year, and yeah, when it was time for the other guys to step up, they completely wet the bed. There's many more things I could say, but I'm trying to get this video uploaded ASAP. Let me know your thoughts down below about that. Romanian.